Good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of Autodesk team, I welcome you to the Advanced Manufacturing Summit. In today's session, we are going to discuss on Autodesk Mold Flow's best practices for the cooling channel modeling and result interpretation. So let's get started. What's to be covered in next 45 minutes? A quick overview of the content. We'll get started with the cooling overview, a brief overview of importance of the cooling and how it impacts an overall cycle time and part quality. Then we'll look upon the cooling uh, component modeling, like creation of the cooling channels, creation of the curves, giving the attributes, and then modeling of the beams. And in advanced cooling, that's called as conformal cooling, we'll also look into the modeling of the cooling channel workflow and assigning those boundary conditions and then cooling inputs, assigning the boundary conditions, what are the different types of coolants we can use it to cool the mold or keep in the required operating temperature. Then we'll look in, into the cooling results, like few of the results that can be very quickly interpreted and gives understanding whether the cooling channel that has been laid out is efficient in cooling the part. Then at the end, I would like to take the question and answer. So with that, uh, we'll begin. But I want to give, uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sachin Fulsinder. I am a technical specialist at Autodesk. My primary role is, is into the to understand the customer's need requirement onto the simulation part of them and help them in suggesting the what could be the best solutions that they can opt for addressing their existing uh, challenges. I have done the master's in plastic engineering and my all of my experience is in the plastic domain, starting with the you know molding, tooling, all plastic product design. And from last uh, 10 years, I have been associated with the Autodesk, but in all, I have 18 plus years of experience in the plastic domain. So with that, uh, we will get started into the cooling overview. So I like to you know discuss a bit on to the importance of the cooling in the injection molding process and how it impacts the overall cycle time and part quality. Most of the times when we talk about the cooling, it's more related to the you know cycle time, but it also does has the impact on to the part quality uh, in terms of the aesthetic as well as dimensional tolerance. So importance of the cooling, as I mentioned that. Cooling not only impacts the overall cycle time, it also has an impact on to the altogether the product cost as well. If you look at the pie chart on to the right hand side, I give you a breakout of that complete injection molding cycles, starting with an, the fill time and then pack and the cooling time. If you consider cooling time, roughly it counts to the like uh, 66 to 75 percent of your old cycle time. On to the left hand side, I've shown you the uh, couple of thermal images uh, of the parts, which is at one at 31 seconds and 40 seconds. So these are the like and showing that how differently the temperature distribution would be at different uh, uh, time zones. Probably with the thermal images, we could able to see that, but this is what we are trying to see using the mold flow solutions to see, get the insight within the mold. And also I talked about the part quality. So cooling has a direct impact into the part finish. Like if you are, you know, cooling it faster, probably you may get a like very dull finish or something. And it also impacts onto the residual stresses or premature failure of the component. Distillity is directly related to the shrinkage in the part. And thermal bending, that is the bending of the part, towards the hotter area or the softer side of the part that gets bent. So uh, mold flow analysis uh, without the cooling channels, probably many of you would be doing it. The cooling and uh, mold flow analysis to the like, like extent like field pack and people try to run warp and, uh, as well on this. When you're doing a mold flow analysis without the cooling channel, it assumes the isothermal or perfect cooling. So that could be one of the reasons when you start the mold flow analysis, you need to specify the mold temperature. It assumes that everywhere within the mold is having a constant temperature or perfect cooling of that required temperature, like 
60 degree or 70 degree whatever you are going to specify but i would suggest it's a very ideal stage for the warpage benchmark when designing the cooling channel and this also has the impact on to the thicknesses so whichever regions are thick probably would need a uh, longer time to cool uh, we are assuming like a perfect cooling but if you compare like an a thickness of like suppose 2.8 5 mm versus like a 3.5 mm a 3.5 mm would take a little longer time compared to us so this gives an understanding that i need to do a specific configuration change uh, when designing the cooling channels for that thicker section a little background on like in you know, a graduate or undergraduate uh, schooling physics so i want to show you that what are the different modes of heat transfer that happens within the mold like in this case the heated melt enters through the nozzle into the sprue and then it follows the like a cavity profile we use the cooling channels to extract the heat but mode of heat transfer that happens between the melt and the mold is is completely like a conduction type of heat transfer and then we use a convection type of heat transfer to transfer the heat from the mold wall boundaries to the coolant media if you ask me like which is the most uh, prominent type of heat transfer that happens within the mold is the convection and probably then the conduction and the third one that radiates the heat out of the mold boundaries is probably the least one or the smallest one to take so three modes of you know heat transfer that happens within the injection mold is conduction convection and radiations but convection is prominently the highest one and that could be one of the reason that we try to use a different you know cooling channel configurations different coolant that we will discuss in the forthcoming slide mold uh, you know heat transfer through the mold uh, through the mold is directly impacted by the mold material uh, and the highlighted one here is the p20 uh, that is so by default the mold flow uses it's most commonly used tool steel and i try to jot down like in different types of the material and their thermal conductivity and many a times you might heard that if the from the tool makers that if the cooling is not efficient or he wants to extract the heat from in critical sections he try to use the beryllium copper or high conductivity inserts and that could be the one of the reason is beryllium copper has the you know almost say eight to nine times of the thermal conductivity that compared to the tool steel and that could be the one reason that it is also an uh, very expensive type of materials to be used and it's not possible that complete uh, plate or complete cavity is made of the beryllium copper insert we try to use it only at the specific locations where it is needed but if you compare to the even with the aluminum uh it has a higher thermal conductivity compared to the tool steel but the, if you look at the different grades of the tool they uh, tool steel they almost uh, fall in the same uh, range of thermal conductivity now coolant inlet temperature uh it's always been you know when i discuss with the customers or say it's always some of the people say that uh, the coolant temperature should be the same that of the mold temperature it's not true the reason is that coolant is used to maintain the mold temperature and if you are trying to keep the coolant temperature in the mold temperature the same probably you will not be cooling down the mold in that case so what is the best practice for that uh, is that normally 10 to 30 degree lower than the mold surface temperature that's what is recommended uh, to have uh, for the coolant and optimum temperature will depend upon the distance between the cooling channels and the part and thermal conductivity of the mold material cooling uh, line placement uh, uh, placing the cooling lines to provide the uniform cooling again there are some calculations that can be worked out i showed in the forthcoming slides but this is an example where you know we have like an five cooling channels like been placed on to the left hand side you can see that but those are not been properly placed probably they may not having the inside where to be placed and when we do the mold flow analysis we get an insight that where these cooling channels to be placed 
So if we keep it far away from the heat source, they may not be when effective. So probably you need to keep it closer to the heat source so that it extracts the heat efficiently. And this is what I was talking about, the, some of the calculations that can be used it to keep the spacing between the cooling channels. So spacing uh, uh, between the cooling channels and the cavity uh, is roughly like an, uh, 10 times of the part wall thickness and the spacing between the adjacent channels, uh, you can see that it's more like an two to three times of the channel diameters. Again, these are the like a thumb rules. So, uh, so probably, uh, you know, we may need to try it a few iterations to get uh, closer to the very specific value. But these calculations are good to go at the initial stage uh, rather than doing the assumptions. Then length of the cooling circuit. And this is where I show an example of the three cooling circuits uh, like A, B, and C, where A layout is takes a complete round around the part even C over here. Now you can take a complete layout over here and B uh, goes uh, across the part uh, from the center and then, uh, then comes out and C where these cooling channels are split into two. Now each of these cooling channels has an, you know, uh, advantages and disadvantages like A goes all around but it misses the center portion. B, yes, it covers every, uh, in each and every location within the part but it's quite and long so it may probably face the challenge of the like and pressure limit or higher pressure drop. And then uh, same is with the C, either we need to put in like a two uh, inlets and outlets or else uh, probably this has to be connected with the hose and that can again lead to the pressure drop issue. And uh, baffles and bubblers, uh, uh, you probably heard the name from the tool makers. Uh, these are the like a special type of the cooling channels, I would say, that are used to remove the heat from the critical sections or where there is a chances of having the high heat concentrations because of the thickness or the having a deeper core in, uh, in the part. This is also used to achieve a high cooling efficiency by creating the turbulence within the channels. Now, baffle is the very simplest way of creating. So uh, in this, uh, we have an, like an, a channel or the a drill in the core and it is splitted with the help of the slit in, the, in that circular channel. It's just like a, a split uh, or the strip, we put it and then allow the water to flow over that half section. Bubbler are little complicated in the sense it's a cylinder within the cylinder. You can see over here, uh, the water goes from the inner cylinder and then comes out from the outer cylinder. It forms a, like a fountain type of flow. And of course, uh, since it is forming a fountain type of flow, it has better uh, cooling efficiency compared to the baffle, but it's a little complicated in the design uh, when it comes to the manufacturing as well. Series versus parallel circuits. So, so again, the like in a series circuit, each of these circuits has an advantages and disadvantages. Like starting with the series one, I like it often. Uh, it's much uh, uniform flow rate and uniform heat extractions, but disadvantages that we may need a high pressure drop for it. Parallel circuits, then again, the splitting of those channels, uh, best to use around the circuits or, or use around the inserts, and it has comparatively lower pressure drop but disadvantages like a unif un non uniform flow rate within the branches because this would get divided. A single flow rate may get divided, and it depends upon the again pressure drop how this each of these branches will carry the flow rate. And as I saw that, mentioned that it's because of the un uniform flow rate within the branches, it has a lower branch uh, efficiency as well. Uh, so probably each of these branches will show a different cooling efficiencies. Uniform cooling, why is the uniform cooling needed? Part cross section should uniformly cool with respect to the, you know, to have like an uniform distortion within the part or uniform shrinkage in the in the part. I say not, not distortion, but the shrinkage in the part. And none of the part that we design may are uniform in thickness. Probably some of the parts may be uniformly thick. I'll give an example of a square box or here where we try to put in the cooling channels to a best extent 
on to the cavity side where we can extract the heat much effectively but on to the core side where we can extract the heat from the center portion but when it comes to the corner probably we may not be efficient in extracting the heat and this is the where the heat concentration happens in the corner region and it tries to you know the hotter sections tries to pull inside or as i mentioned at the start of the presentation that thermal bending is another aspect of the cooling so in this case if you are not able to uh, extract the heat from the corner then a buckling of the part happens over here because of the thermal contraction let's look into the now modeling of the uh, cooling components it's best i would suggest to get started with the you know the simplest way by using the cooling circuit wizard it's the simplest way to get started where we want to understand that which sections would need a uh, higher cooling or which sections doesn't need that much of the cooling needed so i'll get started with the cooling wizard where with one click you can cool in the like in cooling wizard by uh, whether we want to put it on the x direction or y direction of the cavity layout and what should be the number of channels the distance between the channel centers or the distance between the curves of the channel centers and distance uh, to be extended beyond the parts and also there is an option that you can connect the channel with the hoses as well so automatically creates the curve nodes beams and cooling inlets as well so by default it assumes like a uh, 25 degree of whatever that uh, uh, for temperature of the coolant and it gives that uh, uh, flow rate based upon the Reynolds number or so. And as, as I mentioned that it's very uh, good at the starting point to get started with this. So let's look at the demonstration how this cooling circuit wizard uh, works over here. I have an part uh, of, uh, of the um, housing for the uh, contr game controller and it's a two cavity uh, mold and i want to demonstrate how do we get started uh with the with the modeling uh with the cooling wizard so to pull down cooling wizard you need to be into the geometry tab and then cooling circuits as i mentioned that as you click on the cooling circuit it will uh, start showing that what should be the your channel diameter and how far and between the part would like to uh, get started usually by default it takes like 25 mm like 10 times of the product wall thickness is best to get started and then you want to put it on the like an x direction or the y directions like in this case should i put it in the like in the x direction in this case it will create in the x directions or y directions in this case i like to go with the y direction and then how many uh, number of channels you want to get started in this case i want to get started with the six channels and like in 30 uh, distance uh, between the channel centers and it should not extend extend beyond the part of like 155 instead of that i would say that 55 and that will give a little preview of that how this is how it lo look like and connect the uh, channel with the hose and i say finish uh, you can see that i keep quickly created the the cooling channels and it's best way to get started to understand that which area i need to be uh, careful in cooling or which area is sufficiently cooled with an uh, uh, normal cooling channels and it also assigns the cooling by default as i mentioned that it assigns like a 10000s of reynolds number and the coolant temperature of uh, 25 and by default it uses pure water as the coolant to get started and then creating the cooling circuits many times probably you need to create your you know customized cooling circuits to need to extend uh, some of the cooling regions in the core uh, how do we get started on that or probably you need to create the baffle of bubblers for in that case so there's multiple ways to create the cooling circuits uh, one of way is by creating the circuits using the curves so how to get started is click the existing nodes and then click the uh, end of the curve and enter the coordinates like i mentioned that and there is an option like you want to get started with the relative means in the sense of with respect to the first node that you are selected and then uh, enter that in x 
Y and Z direction with respect to that node or in absolute like in the global coordinate systems like first node is in the global coordinate system the second node is also you probably know that it's in the that coordinate you can automatically enter then as you are creating the curve you can also assign the attributes automatically uh, or say that okay i'm going to create these curves that stands for like an, a channel of 10 mm or you can say that it is a, just a modeling entity i can assign the attributes that part as well and copy the existing curve when possible or and generate the mesh uh, generate mesh uh, is needed to create the beams on that one uh, like in this case i have the cooling channel and i will start with the in the geometry i have the nodes and then i'll create the nodes uh, by offset or nodes by coordinate or nodes by you know between the coordinates as well you can also create it so in this case i am going to create the nodes by offset uh, i select the first point and then I'm going to create an offset of it, zero. And uh, it's in the X, it's in the Y, and say I'm going to create a, you know, like an oh, 50 mm in the minus Z directions of that, so that I'm, I'm putting it in, in this directions. So number of nodes, apply one. So you can see that it has got created this node. And now, as I mentioned that there is a, a different way to create that, those uh, nodes with the coordinate. I use one of it, or you can use a directly create the curve as well, like I mentioned. So if I would have been creating the curve, I could select the relative or absolute. Like in this case, I will, uh, I, initially created the nodes, but you can create the uh, curves directly with, without the offset in this case. So it started with the first point this, and then second point, and as I mentioned that I can assign the modeling entity or I can select it that I want to have the channel that is of like an, a 10 mm, you can select it and apply it. You can see it has been created. So this is the way of creating the nodes. Uh, then we can also create the beams instead of like want to say, uh, doesn't want to follow this way of modeling the cooling channel, you can directly create the beam as well. So I can select the node and then the endpoint. In this case, I may probably need to offset it before I go for it. So I'll create a node. Uh, first offset this one and say that again, I'll put it like, say minus 50, apply it, it has created one, and then go into the beam, starting first point and then second point, and you can decide the L by D, that and like in this case, like uh, L by D ratio should be like in the range of 2.5 to 3. Uh, if you are modeling a baffle of like an 10 mm, so probably uh, L by D uh, or the section should be like an, the length of like 50 divided by 10. So phi uh, uh, of like an, sorry, I'm extremely sorry. So 50 divided by like an, if I want to, 2.25, or 25, so it will just create like a two two beams per, but for the best results for the baffles, you should have at least three beams. So I'm going to create an at least like a three or four beams over here, starting with this point and this, and then apply it. So this creates the baffle. So I showed you the, you know, two way of modeling. One is using the curve, first node and taking offset, or you can directly create the curve with relative position or absolute position, and then modeling of the baffle. I already showed you the creation of the beam, and then I showed it for the baffle, but you can use it the same thing for the channels, hoses, or the uh, bubbler. And I did mention about the uh, L by D ratio. So in, 
in this case, it was like 50 mm was the distance. And if I need to put that 2.5 L by D ratio, I need to divide that with 25. Probably it have given just two elements in that case, but I need to have at least uh, three or two, four elements to get a precise results for it. Then features can be modeled with uh, like a channel, hoses, baffles, and bubblers. I, I showed it to you. If you already been an old timer user of the mold flow, the previously, you know, we used to model in this form, like in creating the offset between the entry point and the exit point of the water or the entry and the exit point just to nomenclature it. But it, from the 2017, uh, point three version or 2017 version, it's not needed to model the distance between that. Uh, so you can just model as a single line. So you get that. So this was previously the old way of modeling. The new way, you can just model it uh, with a with a single line. Same is for the uh, bath uh, bubbler. Uh, we used to have a little bit of distance between these two points. Now it's not really needed for it. A single line is good enough. And then. If you are, don't want to model by uh, those uh, cooling channels manually, you can create these cooling channels within the CAD system. Uh, any of the CAD system that you are using it or you and you can use it Fusion 360 for that purpose for the creation of the cooling channels. And then ca that can be exported as an IGS uh, file format and can be imported uh, in your assembly. So. You can just uh, you know click at home and import and add instead of like an importing a new file you will be adding it in this one and then right uh, on to the code to assign the property let's look at this or, or workflow how does it look like so in this case i'm going to delete the, all of this geometry okay it's okay and then i'm also going to delete this portion as well And I'm going to add some geometry over here. File and add. I'm going to pull the cooling ch channel IGS I already created and say, just get it default, whatever the mesh you are using, and it quickly gets added up to it. And in the second stroke, what you're going to do is just select those uh, channels. Or and uh, assign it, define, change the property type, and I'm going to make it this as the channel. Or you can go into directly properties and say assign it, and then you decide that what you want to uh, assign. In this case, I'm going to select a channel of 10 mm, and okay, and and the sites. I'll be using it for the hoses. And properties. And I'm going to use as the hose of like 10 mm. And I can also quickly assign those uh, baffles. Change the type to the baffles. It shows that it is been assigned, but you can go into the properties and you can decide that what should be the diameter of your baffle. By default, it takes to 12, but you can anytime you can change it to like and say 12 or 14 or 10. So this completes the you know assigning of the properties when you have the cooling channel modeling done already into the CAD systems, and then in next. You can just uh, generate the mesh. Uh, it will create the uh, cooling channels for you. The other way is that many times when you're working on a very complex tool, it becomes very difficult to extract those uh, cooling channels manually. So with the 2018.2 release, we added an additional functionality of collapsing those 3D cooling channels directly into the curve. And with one click, uh, you can mesh that 3D channels to the 1D beam element. So really it's one click. I'll show you how fast you can collapse these uh, 
3D cooling channels, probably if you have it from your 3D uh, model of the cooling channels, then you can just import it and uh, you can collapse it as a central line. And, and it also assigns the attributes to it very quickly, uh, expect the same attributes to that from the original channel, and then uh, you can mesh it as well. Probably you need to do a little bit of trimming or fine tuning if the cooling channels are been extended or so, and it doesn't assign the properties to the baffle or bubbler. Probably that is the one step that may probably need to follow for that. I'm going to import a new cooling channel, uh, uh, a three channel for it. I'll in include as the uh, solid 3D. And um, this is what the channels that we have imported. And now I'm going to change by default property, maybe as a part, it could be a 3D part as a default properties, change it to the channel 3D. Okay. And then I'm going to collapse this into the center lines. So go into the geometry curves and say center lines and say apply it. Then see with one click really, it has collapsed that 3D channel into the, uh, into the 1D beam and it also has the attributes to it. Okay, you can see that it has already assigned the attributes to it. I select like a diameter of like in 10 mm, uh, it's already getting assigned to it. And probably, as I mentioned, a little bit of fine tuning would be needed. In this case, it has really taken the shape of that uh, the channels. So you can see it has taken the shape of that channels, uh, how it goes. This is what it has taken the shape. Probably you need to little bit fine tune those if necessary, but not uh, needed every time. You can just select those. Uh, and change the properties to the baffle. And you can see the properties now, it's like a 10 mm baffle. You can make it as well. You are ready to mesh it. So then it's missed out. Okay, it's done. And you can just mesh it like and go into the mesh and generate mesh. And uh, you can also get the preview by default and uh, um, mesh it. We'll come back uh, by the time it gets meshing completed. It's pretty fast. It has already completed the machine. Yeah, it's completed. And you can see that it has meshed that baffles and channels are almost ready. Okay, so this was the best I would find it. Uh, it saves a lot of time in creation, uh, creating those manual curves and assigning the properties. Now the other way is that you can directly import the 3D channel as it is and mesh it. This is particularly recommended for the advanced cooling that's called as conformal cooling, where the complex the geometry of the cooling channels are really complex. You can, so, you can see over here, this having a very complex features and cannot be well be represented with the 1D element or will not get the you know proper representation to the solver and probably it impacts the accuracy of the cooling analysis uh, with the 1D elements. So this can be represented in the form of the 3D cooling channels and uh, a tetrahedral mesh uh, can be used to represent that and we can assign the properties as the 3D channels to it. Apart from that, um, there's a two way uh, you can run the cooling boundary element modeling is that without creation of the boundary layer uh, of the boundaries. 
that's that's uh, usually people run it but if you want that you can also create an actually an enclosure for the your part and the cooling channels is with the help of the uh, mold surface wizard uh, we can just uh, enter the dimensions or automatically it picks the dimensions if you're not entered by default it's like in gray color that you see a box over here and you can usually find the mesh to be little very coarse as compared to that created for the 1d element because it's just for the representation purpose or you know playing the making the solver to play in the specified boundaries that's the boundary element uh, mold uh, mold creation is is used for and of course for when you are working on a uh, finite element uh, or fem modeling or finite element modeling probably you need to create or must to create the boundaries for the your mold to ensure that you should have the part runner and channels are visible for it and geometry is created as a mold block so there is in two options to create the mold block one is that you create within the software or you can also import the mold block for it enter the mold uh, size like i showed it into the earlier when we were creation of the cooling channel the same way you can enter the mold size for it and then click create the mold block and it generate the mesh so probably this is how it creates the mesh uh, very detailed mesh and also it uh, try to separate the uh, you know mesh of the cooling channels and the mesh of the mold so it probably may need a little higher resources compared to what we are working on a BEM. So what are the cooling analysis inputs? As we get started uh, with the cooling analysis, there's two ways to do the cooling analysis. One is using the very isothermal uh, type of or perfect cooling type of perfect cooling around the part. That's where, where we don't put any cooling channel, but we are just make the solver to understand that my mold surfaces are having temperature of uniform say specified 60 degree or 70 degree or 80 degree and we run a uh, fill pack and warp I, I would say that this is very ideal for predicting the warp when uh, warp page in the part and uh, also give you the understanding that uh, which sections I need to properly look for the cooling uh, with respect to the thickness the other thing is that assigning the inlet and outlet properties um, so we call it as the boundary conditions so it can be assigned as a pressure flow rate reynolds number or the temperature so let's look at the into the um, demonstration part how does it looks uh, uh, works for it like in this case uh, probably or let me get started with this one and go into the boundary conditions and then say that okay keep coolant inlets or you can also put it from if you change the analysis type from here to the fill to the say cool you can also assign the cooling inlets from from just below your uh, study task uh, menu as well but cooling inlets and then you click on this it will ask you and then edit it what form of like coolant inlets you want to enter is it like specified Reynolds number by default it takes like a 10,000 to have a turbulence within the channel but you can specify as the pressure flow rate usually industry flow rate is in the range of like four to five liters per minute but it depends upon what is available at your end if you want to be very specific and then we can also have the pressure drop as well directly as input then you can put the coolant uh, inlet temperature and then uh, you can also select the different types of the coolants also available like in pure water or uh, ethylene glycol or oil if probably if you're using with the uh, crystalline material or semi-crystalline materials and uh, for the BM uh, or the process uh, you can also get into the solver parameter settings I'll show you how quickly you can do that into the like and if you go into the process settings and into the coolant solver parameters I usually don't touch it by default uh, it works perfectly fine but if you want to having a problem in the convergence or so then only you can go for the changing of this for uh, convergence tolerance or you want to run it a little faster and compromising the accuracy probably um, you can look at for editing but but by default uh, it works perfectly fine and it's not really recommended to change this uh, uh, cool solver parameters.
and uh, cool uh, uh, fem process uh, it's also uh, similar up to the selection of the analysis sequence but it has like in three different types of analysis to be selected from or the mole temperature options to be selected from you can be like in in the first you can be like an specified the cooling time or injection packing and cooling time injection is already be specified packing also you specify and the remaining portion is will be considered as cooling time and all together like an start with like an uh, automatic or semi automatic and then you can average it within the cycle or transient within the cycle or transient from the production start up average within the cycle is similarly uh, it's very similar to that of the cool bm and let's quickly look into the cooling results depending upon what type of analysis you are uh, you are running with the whether it is a cool bem or the cool fem or cool uh, fem transient you'll get the different types of results the cool fem particularly has a little longer list of results because it gives the results on to the core and the cavity side we call as a part top and part bottom as well like an and it also has the temperature within the profile whereas the cool fem average uh, it's, I, I told you as it is very similar to that of the cool vm but it's average within the cycle and cool fem is a transient one it shows the result all throughout the cycle the first results are probably i would look like it in what is the circuit coolant temperature it started at how is the temperature distributions happening within the within the cooling channels and then the pressure drop like if you have like a longer circuit probably you get a higher pressure drops and probably you can think of like dividing into the two or splitting into the two to reduce that pressure drop temperature part um, i usually compare that part temperature um, with the ejection temperature but it also gives me the understanding which are the like a cold spots in the part and the hot spots in the part and then probably i can zoom it in that particular location and see that okay these are the spot hot spots in the my part and probably i can look at improving the coolings in these sections or probably on to the cavity side probably i have a little better cooling and i can think of reducing it so probably carefully looking at the temperature part gives understanding on the cold and the hot spots in the part and the temperature part is again a result very similar to the part temperature but it's just at the interface of the part and the mold it's a skin of the mold that that uh, shows this uh, temperature on on of it cool fem uh, particularly it's like an a uh, very transient type of thing which gives you the you know complete understanding how the temperature is getting distributed throughout the cycle probably you can also animate it uh, uh, i'll show you if time permits so i'll show you it can also be animated throughout the cycle of that how the temperature is changing from the starting to the end and you can also plot it if probably if you want at particular locations to be plotted you can also plot it as this one so that was pretty quick if you have any questions you can put it in your chat box or i will be available to answer your questions uh, related to it but there is an additional resources available so look out for the mold flow uh, iq uh, seminars run by the support team there is also seminars or the sessions available on quick start on that and probably you want to subscribe to the autodesk uh, mold flow channel or mold flow channel and there is additional resources available on to the sim hub uh, event uh, as well and there is an online training uh, conducted by our support team so please if you are interested in in doing any of such training like inside fundamental or advanced flow or advanced cool and warp please reach out to the uh, or to this team or your representative in your respective regions and probably they can get in touch with the auto this representative and then consulting team can work out for the additional online training help and technical support so probably whatever the results you are looking at if you are looking at the like in the coolant result just press the f1 and the help files opens for you there is a other way is to reach out to autodesk team is in the form of forums uh, there is an mold flow inside forum available you can put in your queries but the best way to reach out is to contact the technical support through your account apart from there is a lot of topics available on to the getting started on to the from the knowledge.autodesk.com and there is also telephonic support available uh, for the enterprise uh, priority customers
Thank you for time. And if you have any queries, questions, please uh, put it in your chat window. I would be more than uh, happy to answer your queries or questions.